Coding in the real world isn't always building some crazy app feature or a new fancy website. I mean, yes, building cool things does happen during the day, but the vast majority of work done by software engineers is maintenance. Yeah, maintenance. Maintaining the company application, fixing bugs, and cleaning up ancient, dusty code. A lot of people seem to think that working at tech companies is a lot more glamorous than it actually is. Thanks to all the day in the life of videos circling YouTube, which of course, I've never made before. But it's definitely not what it seems. Work does get done, and most of the time, it's pretty ordinary. I wanted to make this video to show you examples of the type of coding that I do on a daily basis. No, it's not solving outer space algorithms in 20 minutes or less or anything like that. Actually, I hardly ever use algorithms at all in my work life, ever. <laughs> Get that out of your head. Although sometimes, some things you work on can be pretty difficult. A lot of them are really just figuring out what does what and making small incremental changes. So if you like this video and want to see more, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more cool content. Thanks for watching. All right, let's get right down to the actual code. Quick disclaimer, these are all examples of small projects that I've worked on. I've changed around a bunch of the details and made things ambiguous on purpose <laughs> for obvious reasons, because I'm not getting sued. So if we go right to the first example, I'm gonna pull up this was a small front end change that was my first project ever assigned at this company that I was working at. The task was basically to remove an unused and unneeded component from a React file. Super simple change, not much to really think about. It was more of just a ramp up task for me to get more familiar with the code base and how the entire code deployment process at the company worked. Even though this change was really simple, it was still important and had a clear business need as the unneeded component was clogging up the UI. So what I had to do here was remove all references of the component in the file in question. So that includes the import statement at the top and lower where the entire page is rendered. I had to delete the component there as well. And that was it. For my next front end change, it was a bit more involved than the last one. Instead of deleting a component, I had to basically add a new thing to a page. To make this as ambiguous <laughs> and unsuable as possible, there was a drop down box of selections that the user could make. My job was basically to add a new selection to the page and then make a new UI feature that utilizes that new drop down selection option. And although this was definitely tougher than the last one, it really just involved me looking at how the other selections were added to the page and copying that over for the new one. So although it was a bit more involved, it was still relatively simple. It just involved me just having to really understand how the entire feature worked and using it for my change. And these selections were used in a bunch of places throughout the whole project. So these, this is just one of the files I also had to add this new selection option to. So aside from front end changes that I made, I also got to make some back end um, changes. And to further distinguish that, a lot of times what you're working on can be pretty ambiguous. Sometimes you're working on a page and sometimes you're working on the features behind the scenes or the systems that help control what the user views on the page. Luckily enough at this or internship, I was able to just go back and forth between those areas. And so I got a lot of experience on both ends of the stack. So this change occurred in the Scala file, which powered the back end of one service for the company. Apparently some function within this file was causing the page to time out every once in a while. So we had to consider the inputs of this function and whether or not we should change them a bit. So here you see, I was playing a, a bit with some of the inputs of this function. Of course, I'm not gonna say what the exact inputs were or their names. But a lot of this was just testing this out, changing some numbers in the back end and seeing if we could reach a situation where every time you run the page, it wouldn't time out. And eventually we got it. <laughs> so it was a bit of trial and error, a bunch of investigation into wondering exactly what was the cause. And we managed to pin it down to this file. And after a few guesses, we did manage to find a solution where the page was running just fine. Now for the last task that I'll be showing in this video, I was a part of this multi-week project to implement this API, which would upgrade an existing tool for the company. This one was by far the most involved thing that I had worked on up until this point, and it involved a lot of discussion with members of my team, members of other teams, and of course, looking over documentation all over the place, especially 
the documentation of the service whose API that we would be interfacing with. Working with APIs is one of my favorite areas, and when this project was offered, I took the chance to try, try out something that, although I was interested in, I was really unfamiliar with, especially like in a real world setting. And it was really fun. I learned a lot, especially about reading documentation and learning how to send GET and POST requests to other services, and also commenting my code. Once I developed this API method, as I was the main person working on this project, it was important to comment exactly which parameter was used for what purpose. As you see, I did above the method signature. And just in general, that's something that doesn't happen a lot in the real world, people commenting their code. And sometimes people think, uh, well, good code shouldn't need comments. And some of that is true, but at the same time, if someone else is working on something that only you are working on, you definitely want to ease their burden of understanding what's going on as much as possible, of course. So there you have it, four examples of real work, real world coding. I This was pretty fun. I actually like doing this. I hope this is really useful for someone that's either interested in possibly doing software development or they've already been doing it and they want to see what other kinds of people work on. Um, let me know in the comments if you like more videos like this. And you can also show me by liking and subscribing for more cool content. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad I had an opportunity to, show, to share this information because I definitely would have wanted this when I was um, younger. So thanks for watching and get ready for the next video.